welcome back to Carillon Historical Park here in Dayton, Ohio. Today we're going to talk printing. Now in the 1930s, Dayton, Ohio had 77 different job shops printing all kinds of materials from notepads all the way up to full publications. These were shops from somebody's basement, one little press, up to a McCall's Printing, which was the largest printing facility under one roof in the United States, right here in Dayton, Ohio. So at Carillon Park, we have this print shop, 1930s print shop, the only fully operational printing facility um, in a museum from the 1930s, uh, a full job shop. So it's pretty impressive. We're gonna teach you how to print today, how to set type and how to take that to the press. So let's go get started and see how they do it. All right, and here's who I want you to meet. Dennis Bame is one of the, the journeyman printers here at Carolina Park. Good to see you, Dennis. Good to see you. <laughs> So uh, that is here uh, uh, setting type by hand. Setting type by hand. And, 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 and what's the process? You have, uh, this is where they talk about minding your P's and your Q's and uppercase and lowercase, right. all those things that we've heard about. And tell, tell us about that. Okay, well, this is a California job case. It's laid out, capital letters are on this side, lowercase are on this side, and they're laid out by how uh, prominently they're used in the English language. As you can see, the biggest case is a lowercase e, okay? I'm spelling out your name for a, for a notepad for you. Okay. So it's, I put the B-R-A-N-D. Y. And you, this is where the spaces are. Okay, spaces. And what you're pulling out are these tiny pieces of type. Right. <laughs> in each and one of these and, and laying it backward. Now, as you said, this is very time consuming. Right. We, we need a machine to do this, Dennis. How do we speed this process up? Yeah. In the late 1880s, a gentleman named Alcar Morgenthaler, who was a watchmaker, invented that wonderful machine over there. The linotype. The linotype. So this is it, the linotype. You uh, were talking about how this introduced the keyboard to typesetting. Typesetting. So tell me how this works. If okay. we come around here and... Well, first off, the keyboard is not like a computer keyboard. The black letters are lowercase, the blue are numbers and punctuation, and the white are uppercase. The left hand does most of the work. It, it operates the first two columns uh, on the keyboard, and the right hand will take care of everything on the right side. Okay. Uh, so he is setting what we call straight matter. It's type that goes to our brewery newsletter. Okay. Okay. As he types, the molds drop out of the magazine. They come into this area called the assembler. When he has a full line, he lifts the, the assembler and it goes over there. There's a mold, a mold that the mats go up against. A plunger goes down, forces hot lead into the mold. Oh my gosh. And you end up with a line of type. A line, o, a, a line of type. type. A line of type. Right. Okay. What this does is, as I said with hand setting type, when you were finished, you had to put all the mold, the type back. Right. What this machine does is it has this key at the top, and every one of those, depending on the letter, has a different key. Once it's set, the machine picks it up, and you see them screw up there. This will ride along, and when it comes to its matching key, it drops off the bar back down into the magazine. So you could have another so later on in the document. Over and over. Over and over again. That's amazing. So so all of that comes out and this is what pops out at the bottom there. Right. Is a, a solid bar with the type written in here, a line of type. Right. And and then then the next step is to take all of these lines of type and to lock them in to, 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 in, into a form. Into a form to, to get them ready to, to print. All right. So we have the lines of type that blue set. Okay. We're gonna put them on the proof press. Called a proof press. Proof press. All right. Reason we want to proof it, we want to read it, make sure there's no mistakes, because we don't want to go into the press and having print 500 of them and then find out, you know, we spelled Brady wrong. Right. Okay. All yeah. right. So we get some ink. So we put some ink on it. Get a piece of paper there. Put a piece of paper on. It. And pull a proof. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
Now we sit, we re look at it real close, real quick. There's no mistakes. So we'll take the lines out of the proof press. And we'll put them in our form. Okay. We have a, this form has already been built, but we, we swap out the lines. Pull nice. this one out. So Drop that's that a lot a in. lot easier than individual pieces of tape. Right, right. We can pull that line out. Drop it in. Okay. Now we want to make sure it's good and flat. Okay. In the form correct. So we hit it with the mallet. This is called a coin key. These are called coins. They're just mechanical wedges. They lock everything in this form, which is called a chase. A chase. So and that's, we, that comes from a, a French word, right? Chassis? Ch right. The chassis of a car, it's right, a chase. Right. Okay. Okay, it lifts. Okay. It's ready for the press. So it's locked in, we take it over okay. to the press. Take it over to the press. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Dennis. Yep. Appreciate it. So we're over here with Jim. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing real good. Thank you. Good. We're taking the chase, locking it in place. Boy, it's that simple, huh? It's very simple, actually, just to get it set up. The hardest part is when I go to, to do my layout. Okay. So I know exactly where I'm going to print on the paper. Okay? Very good. So you, you, we've set the chase in place. You've already inked. Uh, what is this called? This is, this is an ink disc. A disc, okay. okay. And uh, these rollers do nothing more than just smooth out the ink. So when I first start, I actually put touches of ink, and when I start the press up, it will smooth the ink out, and I'll get it spread all the way across. Okay. So we're all set, ready to go? We're ready to go. All I I'll, do is turn it on. I'll change places with you. <laughs> all right, we have to turn it on, but because of the weight of the, the machinery, I have to give it a little bit of help to get it started. Okay, because of the, it's so heavy. Oh, my gosh. And I have to, I give it a couple seconds just to kind of build up its speed a little bit. Okay. And it looks as if we have one set of rollers that, that continues to massage the ink on the disc, and then another set that's inking the type. Inks the form itself, yeah. This is called the form down in here. And then basically the other thing I had to do is I had to lay my uh, setup in here so that I know exactly where it's going to print when I put in my card. Once I've got that laid out, I actually put in these little pins that have to use it to hold my card into place. Okay. Okay. So show, show how does okay. this work? So I'm ready to print. So basically, when I put my card on, I just get it placed in position. Now you notice nothing's printing. Today. Nothing happened. That's right. <laughs> That's because this, pr this particular press, when it was invented, there is what's called a throw-off arm, and that is this particular. So what will happen is I pull this back, the back part of all this back part of this press actually shifts forward about a half an inch. And this bed is not doing anything but just coming up like back and forth, back and forth. So I have to bring this part in closer to actually hit the paper. Very good. And that's what's going to happen right now. So I pull it back. Ah, magic. <laughs> printing magic right printing there. Magic. So it's called a throw arm? Throw off arm. Throw off arm, throw -off. okay. And uh, that was invented by a gentleman named Gordon. This whole thing is called a Gordon Job Press. Basically. The Gordon Job Press. All right. So now when I'm ready to print, because of the, the fact that the ink may not be fully dry and I don't want to get any offset or ink on the back side, I put a layer, a sheet in between each one. So when I go to print the next one, then I'll just put it on, get this one ready, pull this back, print. Hold on. Just continue the process. Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much, Jim, for doing this. Um, I'll tell you, thank you for coming down to Carolyn Park, and, and hopefully you learned something about doing some job uh, job shop printing. We taught you how to uh, how to set some type and how the line of type will do it for you, how to lock it all in that chase and bring it over uh, to this fabulous machine here. But you really need to come down to the park. It's really hypnotic to look at these machines, um, study them, and, and watch them work with the amazing team down here at Carolyn Park's print shop. We thank you here for joining us, and, and thank you, Jim, for all your help. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. We'll see you next time.